the um, main the main purpose of this group is always focused on process. I am a big believer in process. As an art therapist, um, art journaling is something that I have used um, many times uh, with clients, but I, it's also something I do um, I do with myself, like on my own. <laughs> I wish I always share. I have three art journals that I'm working out of, and all three of them are different. Uh, one's focused mostly on watercolor, one's focused on drawing, and then I have one that I do in this group. And they all look very different, but they all help in a very similar way. Um, I can speak personally when I say like art journaling, um, it's helped me kind of center myself and focus. It's also helped me to kind of relax and de-stress. And then it also helps um, me exercise my problem solving skills uh, too. So it does kind of some practical stuff as well. But like I said, the main focus is always on um, the process, right? And so let me spotlight my hands really quickly. I'm gonna share right? And it's just a regular craft journal unlined with pages and then just a regular glue stick. Uh, you're welcome to bring in all sorts of other supplies, but no, at the same time, you can still just use a number two pencil and still get the benefits of art journaling, right? Um, I always encourage people um, on that very first page to write down um, this little quote, um, know that you don't have to, no pressure to, um, but I think it's always a good reminder, and it's something that's really nice to, to revisit at the beginning of each of our groups. Um, there's this Japanese idea of wabi-sabi, which is all um, centered around the idea um, that perfection perfection is not something that we do, right? There is beauty in the imperfection. We don't always have to focus on making it right or making it perfect or making it straight or symmetrical or anything like that. Um, because just experiencing that and just doing that practice, that act of making, we can find beauty in that, right? Um, I talk about this idea a lot. And a lot of that is because I need that reminder for myself. I tend to be overly critical in my own work. And so having that reminder that it's okay for it not to be perfect because there, there's something wonderful about it just being the way it is, right? So I don't have to worry about my shaking hand getting in the way or my materials running out of ink or whatever it is. Um, but this is a place to really express ourselves, right? Um, to hold our personal and creative expression, however that looks, whatever that is, um, because there's no judgment here, um, no opinions of others. Um, and I want to encourage you to be really gentle with yourself as we go through this series and be open to try um, to try these new processes. We may May not connect with each of them, and that's okay. Um, we don't have to connect with each of them. There's so many different processes out there that we get to pick and choose the ones we like. Um, so we'll go through a variety of processes. Um, so you'll be able to try out all these different uh, practices. Now, each week, we'll have a different prompt that we'll do together. Um, and then we'll talk about um, our next week's uh, prompt and the supplies to look for um, in that coming week. And as I said, you can bring in all the supplies that you would like to, or you can stick with just a regular pencil um, and still be good, still be able to do those prompts. Now, last week we had a writing prompt. We talked about gratitude reflections and we had a list of questions um, that we got to spend time really thinking about and answering. And hopefully it was a, a really nice space for um, a gratitude reflection. Um, I know some of the questions for me were a little harder for me to answer than others were, um, but it was a really, I think, um, nice time to be able to look back and see all these things, um, these good things in my life, these lessons learned or these, um, these positive moments and be reminded of those. I think so often we focus on the negative or the bad things or when something happens, that's not how we plan it to be. And so it's nice to have those reminders for sure. Now today, like I said, we're going to kind of continue that idea of gratitude on. We're in the season of, of gratefulness, right? Thanksgiving season. And we're going to focus on something called a gratitude tree. I um, really focus on that positive too. So I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to be using a clean page in my my art journal today. Um, and the other supplies that we need are just like writing utensils. Um, so pens, pencils, colored pencils, markers, um, anything that can bring color um, in. All right. 
So I want to talk um, just a little bit about an artist because he's got a piece that we're really going to focus on today. Um, but Klimt, uh, you may have heard of him. Uh, he's an, Austri uh, an Austrian painter. Um, his dates were like like 1860 or 1862 to 1918. Um, so he was a little while ago, um, but he was one of the main artists um, to be a member of the Vienna Secession, right? And so this was kind of a pivotal moment in um, art for Vienna. Um, it was like a creative boom that happened. Um, artists that were making outside of the norm, and he was one of the main people doing it. I will say he's a little kind of odd. <laughs> and you may see that in this picture. I was just sharing with you, Ching, um, a little while ago that there aren't many pictures of him around, um, but most of the pictures we find of him uh, are with his cat, <laughs> which I think is like pretty great. Um, but he usually wears this kind of smock um, dress um, that he was not, he kind of was outside the norm here. Um, his father was a goldsmith. His mother was a musician. And so he had creativity in his blood, right? Um, a lot of his art is inspired by Byzantine mosaics. And I think we can kind of see that a little bit with these two paintings here. He used a lot of symbolism in his paintings. And uh, one of the interesting things about him um, actually is that he was popular. He made money on his art all the way through his career, which is not quite usual for a lot of artists, right? But what he was doing was so unique um, that people were drawn to it. And so these are a couple of his more well-known paintings. Um, the one on the left is the portrait of Adele Block Bauer I, um, and she was definitely a muse for him. He used her in a few paintings um, and quite a few drawings and sketches. Um, and then the one on the right is the kiss, which is probably one we've all uh, we all have seen um, or heard of. But I want to take just a moment and look at these paintings uh, before we continue on. Um, oh, I see in the chat someone's mentioning the movie Woman in Gold. Yes, that's that's actually about the portrait of Adele Blockbauer. That it's a really interesting music or um, movie. I definitely recommend it as well. Thank you for sharing that. Um, but let's take a moment and just look at these two paintings. Um, what are a couple of the things, a few of the things that you kind of see in both of these paintings? There's no wrong answer. <laughs> Well, let's continue on. I'm going to look at, we're going to focus on this next painting of his. And this one is actually called The Tree of Life. It was done in 1905. So I want us to just take a moment and look at this image too. I know there's a lot going on, so take your time with it. Um, but this painting has become like a really important symbol that was used um, or is used by um, theologies and philosophies and mythologies. Um, but that tree of life symbol, which he painted here, and this is on a mural. So this one is quite large, um, but it kind of like tree of life kind of symbolizes that connection between like heaven and earth and the underworld. Right. Um but one thing that's so interesting about this is that tree really does take over the whole painting. Um, so take just a moment and look at this image. And what are some of the things that you notice um, in this painting? Um, right. Uh, but I want us to take a moment to be kind of inspired by this painting. Um, like I said, there's a lot going on um, here. He was known for his patterns. And so he has an abundance of patterns, of course, in this painting. Um, so don't feel, please don't feel overwhelmed by all the patterns. Um, but I want us to kind of think about um, and create our own tree, um, symbolizing growth and gratitude, right? Um, and I want us to kind of think about what it is that feeds our soul. Um, what, is, what is it that nurtures us? Um, what is it we need to thrive, to make our tree life grow, right? So I want us to spend just a little time kind of creating our own tree. Um, maybe it's something that looks like Klimt's painting here, where it's that strong trunk, where these branches just make these lovely little curly cues out. Um, or maybe it's more of a traditional tree. Um, but I want us to kind of 
think about that tree that we saw uh, that was filled with those twists and turns, those that variety of branches. Um, and, and I want us to kind of make our own tree. Um, it can be based off of Klimt's painting um, where it has that strong like center uh, trunk and all these beautiful curly cues coming out, or it can be more of a traditional um, a traditional looking tree. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my supplies. I'm gonna encourage you to do the same, um, bringing in whatever colors or mark makers uh, you wanna use. I've got some colored pencils and some markers um, with me today. And I'm just going to start off with a pen and you're welcome to follow along with me and make your tree uh, similar to mine or kind of go out on your own and make a tree that speaks to you. Um, but we're going to spend some time right now just starting off with our tree um, and then spend some time adding some words to it. So go ahead and start building that tree. Um, I found sometimes the easiest place to start is by figuring out what that horizon grant line is um, it kind of gives me a good place to start and so I'm just going to bring my tree up and then I build my trunk like I said welcome to follow along with me if you like or strike out on your own and I've got my horizon line here so I can start building those roots I'm just going to add some roots to my tree and give me time to think about those things that feed me, that feed my soul. I'm going to come up to where my trunk is. And I'm going to start bringing in some branches. Um, and I'm going to do some light clamp. There's something that's really nice about those little curly branches. So I'm just going to bring in some of those curly cues. Know that whatever we do, it doesn't have to be um, perfect. It doesn't have to be super straight. It doesn't have to be even. I'm just making a little tree that we can kind of spend some time riding on. Mm. You wanna do those curly cues. Know that you, you are more than welcome to. If you wanna do just a straight um, few branches, mm. know that you can do that as well. However your tree looks is good. We're gonna add color to it in just a moment. And take some time with your drawing, building that base, drawing those roots in. Building those branches. I'm just going to add some more branches to the ones that I've already drawn. Filling my page with a lot of the little curly cues that Klimt had. Just building off some of the branches. It can look however. No, it doesn't have to be a certain way. It can be however you want it to be. Just take your time with it. Adding those branches in. I'm just bringing some of these little curly twists and turns. Just take your time with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I see someone in the chat said a Medusa tree, and I think that mine is kind of taking on that image <laughs> for sure. All the little curly cues coming out of the top. Mm. I've got my tree started. Know that you can make yours more detailed or more simplified. However you do it is exactly right and exactly how it needs to be. 
I'm going to set my pen down for just a moment. I'm going to bring in some color. I'm going to kind of decorate my tree just a little bit. So I'm going to start with my roots here, thinking about the complexity of Klemp's paintings, the patterns and the colors that he brings in. I wish I had some gold markers because I feel like this would be the ideal time to use a gold marker. <laughs> I'm just going to spend some time adding a little color to my tree. So I'm going to encourage you to do the same. If you don't want just a plain brown and green tree, know that that is okay as well. You can use um, a purple tree or a, a blue tree, a yellow tree. Whatever colors you use, you bring in is good. Just bringing in some color to my tree. As you're bringing that color in, I encourage you to think about those things that keep us rooted. Those things that give us that good foundation to stand on, that grounding. Maybe it's Maybe it's family, maybe it's community. Maybe it's having a quiet time <laughs> where you just have that moment to yourself. So you're coloring it in as you're making those marks. You're building that shape up, thinking about those roots, what it is that keeps you rooted. Thinking about my roots that I'm working on, <clears throat> I'm just going to write in some of those things that keep me rooted. You know, if I think about it. Conversations with friends keeps me rooted. Taking time to make art. Some great things that keep me rooted, that keep me grounded, and helps feed my soul. No, you don't have to fill out all those roots. But just kind of thinking about some of those things as we're coloring it in. I'm going to continue my drawing up and start to color in some of my tree. I'm just going to kind of color in some of my branches here. And I'm just going to kind of color in some of my tree, bring that color in. You can see, like, I'm, I'm never really concerned with coloring inside my lines. <laughs> I always think lines are such a great guide that I can choose to use or not to use. <laughs> so I'm just kind of taking my time with it. Filling in those colors, filling in those branches. Knowing that it doesn't have to, like I said, doesn't have to be perfect. This is the time to just kind of think about those things. Maybe something that grounds us and that feeds our soul. I'm thinking about those things that we need to thrive. 
And just take your time with that, with your peace. Knowing that, like, whatever we make, it doesn't have to be exactly the same. It can be different. This is just a time to create and to think about those things that we're grateful for, those things in our lives that help us survive, that keep us going. I will say one of the things that I am so very grateful for is the opportunity to make art with others. And so being in a group like this where we can be creative and kind of make together, there's something that's really um that really feeds my soul then. So just kind of fill that in. I want to encourage you to think about, again, just think about those things. Those things that add to your life. That bring that joy. You know, I'm doing a lot of lines in my drawing here. Adding that kind of color. <laughs> the backgrounds, building that tree. take some time to start filling in your responses to those things that feed your soul, those things you need to survive, those things that help you thrive. Those, those little things, or maybe those big things that you're grateful for that help make life worth it. You know what I mean? to fill that out. I know our time is coming to a close. I feel like our time always goes so quickly. <laughs> so 